In this lecture, our aim is to show that the two partner Hamiltonians H1 and H2 are isospectral. That is, they have the same energy eigenvalues except for their ground state. So let us uh, quickly recap what we had done. We introduced two operators A which we have written as W of X the superpotential plus I upon root 2M P cap where P cap was the momentum operator minus I H cross D by DX. So we formed A dagger which is W of X minus I upon root 2M times P cap. So from these two we generated the two partner Hamiltonians as H1 is A dagger A which gave us minus H cross squared upon 2M D squared by DX squared plus W squared of X plus W dash of X into H cross upon root 2M. So basically we call this as V1 of X. So we had minus H cross squared by 2M D squared by DX squared plus V1 of X. And similarly we had formed H2 dash of X. That is minus H cross squared upon 2M D squared by DX squared plus V2 of X. So V1 and V2 are called as the supersymmetric partner potentials. Okay. Now let us uh, take H1. Our aim is to prove that uh, H1 and H2 have the same eigenvalues. So let us consider H1 and let's say phi n of x is the nth eigenstate of H1. So H1 is basically A dagger A acting on phi n of x. So but uh, phi, this is basically going to give rise to nth energy eigenvalue. Let us say this is corresponding to H1 acting on phi n of x. So now what we need to do is we operate on this entire equation from the left by A. So what we get is A, A dagger times A times phi n of x equal to E n1 is just a number. So the operator will directly operate on phi n of x. So what we can see is um, if you bracket this out and observe that A, A dagger is nothing but H2. So we have shown that H2 acting on A phi n of x is equal to the same eigenvalue En1 acting on A phi n of x. So there is another eigenfunction of H2 for which En1 is the eigenvalue. Similarly, we can start with H2. Let us say is acting on some psi n of x. That is H2 is basically A, A dagger acting on psi n of x equal to it gives you the nth energy eigenvalue of h2 so to make sure that is the energy eigenvalue of h2 we put a 2 on top acting on psi n of x so similarly one can act with the a dagger on this whole equation from the left and then club together a dagger a which will give you h1 acting on a dagger psi n of x which is some other wave function equal to the same energy eigenvalue en2 times a dagger acting on psi n of x. So this is how we can show that both h1 and h2 are isospectral. Now the last thing that we need to show is uh, they will not have the same ground state. Okay. So where is my cursor? So let us consider the ground state. So what is H1 acting on phi naught of x equal to 0. And similarly what is H2 acting on sorry psi naught of x equal to 0. So now let us look at H1. H1 is nothing but A dagger A acting on phi naught of x. 
it should give zero. So a that means basically a times y naught of x equal to zero. A is nothing but w of x plus i upon root two n p cap acting on y naught of x equal to zero. Now this uh, p cap is nothing but minus i h cross d by d x. So i into i will give you i squared and i squared is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 becomes plus. So you have basically w of x plus h cross upon root 2n d by dx acting on phi naught of x equal to 0. This is the equation we need to solve. So this equation you can see easily is nothing but d phi naught by dx which has an h cross by root 2m okay so this is equal to minus root 2m upon h cross times w of x into phi naught of x so you can see the w of x and the phi naught of x have taken to the other side so i got a minus sign and this i multiplied so i got this so we can now write this d phi naught by phi naught equal to minus root 2m upon h cross w of x dx phi naught will give you uh, you know this uh, integral of this so integrating on both sides you get this so what is phi naught of x so phi naught of x will be exponential of this particular integral minus root 2m upon h cross integral w of x dx this is phi naught now, if the phi naught of x has to be an acceptable wave function in quantum mechanics, then it has to be square integrable. That is, integral minus infinity to plus infinity mod phi naught of x whole square dx should be less than infinity. Or physically what it means is phi naught of x should tend to zero very rapidly as x tends to plus r minus infinity. Plus r minus infinity. So if this were to happen, what you notice is that your uh, uh, w integral, this integral that you have here should be a growing function. It should be a growing function. So if this is a growing function, then exponential of minus infinity will tend towards 0. So now if you want to start with a dagger acting on sin out of x equal to 0, we will get psi naught of x because a dagger you know will basically be um, w of x minus h cross upon root 2m d by dx acting on psi naught equal to 0. So you see when you take it to the other side you get uh, plus sign. So therefore psi naught of x will actually come out to be exponential of plus root 2m by h cross integral w of x dx and now you see w of x integral w of x dx has to be a growing function if it uh, wants uh, if we want phi naught to be normalized to but if this is a growing function then sin naught of x will tend to infinity therefore that won't be normalized to so any only one of them will be uh, available the other will not be a normalization normalizable function so you cannot have both the Hamiltonians H1 and H2 to be having the necessarily having the ground state. So this in short is the proof for the assertion that we made at the beginning that both H1 and H2 are isospectral except for the ground state. One final point before we close is um, what is the energy expectation value of let us say En for the first Hamiltonian. So this will be integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Phi n's are the functions. So phi n star of x into the corresponding Hamiltonian operator for n1 is h1 times phi n of x dx. Now h1 is basically a dagger a. So if I take this a dagger inside, that is if I you know do an uh, five parts and uh, try to show that it is ham uh, Hermitian, which is which it is. So, a times phi n whole star 
into k times pi m of x dx. So basically what we got is into the minus n plus infinity k acting on pi m mod square dx. So this is a mod square integral therefore this always determines here. Similarly e n 2 e n 2 will be integral minus n plus infinity psi n star of x into h2 acting on psi n of x dx. So again we can substitute for h2 as a a dagger then take a inside. So basically what we will get is we will get integral minus n plus infinity a dagger acting on psi n square dx which is also better. So typically the energy eigenvalues of h1 and h2 are non-negative. They are non-negative. 